Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you once again this week to talk about books. I mentioned at the end of the last episode that I thought I would do um, an episode on children's books this week, which, you know, I've done before. I love reading children's books. And... um, As you see from the title, it says Crazy Food Stories. I am talking about children's books that involve food of some sort. Now, I know I have talked about Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs on the podcast before. Can't remember when. Maybe should have looked it up, um, but... I bring it up again because I just recently discovered when I was doing a search for something completely unrelated that there is a third book in that series. And it's actually been out for several years. And I clearly sometimes am living under a rock because I just don't notice when new books come out. This is why this is why I have to follow authors on Amazon and Goodreads and BookBub and all of those things because otherwise I just miss when books come out. At any rate, um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs the movie is based on the title. It's not, it's not so much based on the book. So if you've seen the movie, um, don't go to the book expecting similarities. I mean, there is food that falls from the sky, but, uh, it's a feature length film. So obviously they had to add a lot of details and it's, it's very, very different from the original book. I grew up with the original book. It came out in the copyright is 1978. So it was a book from my childhood and I loved it. I thought it was hilarious and weird and I didn't really want to live and chew and swallow with all the food that fell from the sky. But, um, if you haven't heard of the book or haven't watched the movie or maybe you've watched the movie but you didn't know there was a book whatever Uh, I'm going to give you the description of the book so it says if food dropped like rain from the sky wouldn't it be marvelous or would it it could after all be messy and you'd have no choice what if you didn't like what fell or what if too much came Have you ever thought of what it might be like to be squashed flat by a pancake? Well, have you? (laughs) I didn't mention that uh, the book is by Judy Barrett and illustrated by Ronald Barrett. Um, I thought this was, as I said, hilarious as a kid because their food comes from the sky. It rains orange juice or it rains milk. And you don't watch the weather report to know what kind of clothing you should wear that day. You watch the weather report to see what food you're going to be eating that day. And I thought that was crazy. And then, wow, their food came from the sky. But at the same time, there are no grocery stores. They don't make their own food. What if you didn't like, as it says, what if you didn't like what was raining from the sky? Well, that's what was there. And so, uh, it's the town of chew and swallow and the, the, the food and the drink come from the sky. It's a system that's been in place. It's working, but then they have some climate change and it really like one day it only rains. It only comes down like really stinky, Oh, I can't remember what it is. Asparagus? Something really stinky and gross. I, I just remember the, the faces of the people as they're eating and they're pinching their noses and they're making these really grossed out faces and ugh. Um Yeah, there's there and you know, then it, it starts raining huge quantities of food. They they used to have a system where they would sweep up the excess food and it would go to like stray cats and dogs, and then there's just so much that they can't keep track of it or keep up with it. And then, you know, that last sentence have you ever thought of what it might be like to be squashed flat by a pancake? Well, huge, huge, not just quantities of food start coming down, but huge sizes of food. I mean, there's a pancake that covers an entire house. 
So they have to figure out, the citizens of Chew and Swallow have to figure out what they are going to do to deal with this situation. And I'm not going to tell you what they do, but um, this is a book that starts out with uh, two children and their grandfather, and their grandfather tells them the story of Chew and Swallow. And then in the second book, Pickles to Pittsburgh, um, and that one came out. Let me double check the copyright on that one. So you've still got the same family. You've still got the kids and their grandfather. Um, the kids are Kate and Henry, and they live with their mother and their grandfather. And in this one, grandpa's been on vacation and he sends them a postcard and Kate goes to sleep one night and she's thinking about the postcard and she can't wait for grandpa to get home to tell her more stories because he has the best bedtime stories. And, um, she falls asleep and starts and, and dreams and what she dreams of turns out to then be pickles to Pittsburgh. So the first book has a copyright of 1997. This, I mean, excuse me, in 1978, this book has a copyright of 1997. So a very big chunk. I was an adult when this one came out. Didn't matter. I went out and bought it. I have it in my collection. Um, so the description of this one is, In the amusing sequel to Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, the residents of Chew and Swallow become involved in a project with a food company that transports goods around the world. So this is, as it says, the the uh, sequel, and they, they, they come up with a, a pretty unique um, solution to the food difficulties that were presented at the end of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. This is uh, based on Grandpa's story that he tells in the first book to Kate and Henry, and then Kate has this dream of what's going on in Chew and Swallow. So I that's one of the aspects of the books that I like is that they're fantastical and they're crazy and funny and strange, but they also have that basis of this relationship between grandpa and the two kids, Kate and Henry. And so they have a, you know, they, I like, I always liked that growing up that grandpa would tell them stories that grandpa was kind of silly and that they had this relationship that involved these stories. So then, as I say, I was looking around for, you know, one of my searches that I do when I'm looking for different books and I don't remember at all what this search was. And I came across Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 3, Planet of the Pies. And I was just, wow. So it came out in 2013. So it's been out for five and a half years. Uh, it came out in August of 2013. And again, how did I not know this? Um, because I apparently am not spending enough time in the children's sections at bookstores. That's my answer. So, Kate and Henry can hardly believe their eyes. Astronauts have landed on Mars. And their first discovery there, a thick, glutinous substance that seems to be falling from the sky. A substance not unlike pie filling? Could it be? Could it be raining pies on Mars? Suddenly, Mars seems a whole lot more inviting and delicious than it ever has before. And more will be revealed, because it just so happens that Grandpa has some very personal experience with these Martians. And even more importantly, with the pies. <laughs> so, there is a story on the news, and uh, it says that astronauts have landed on Mars, and the there's this thick, glutinous substance that's falling from the sky, and the newscaster says, maybe it's pie filling. And Kate and Henry run with that. They're like, wow, that'd be awesome if it was raining pies on Mars. And then they're still talking about uh, about the story on the news when Grandpa falls asleep in his recliner, and he has a dream. But, you know, there's always little twists in these books that I, I'm not going to tell you about, but there's always little, little things that happen in, in the books that make you go, wait, hmm, what just happened? Was that a dream? Was that not a dream? Is it? Yeah. Um, and so grandpa, ha it turns out grandpa maybe knows more than he's saying. So this is, it's very similar to Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, the first one, because there's, again, food falling from the sky and it's causing some issues. It just happens to be causing issues on Mars this time instead of Chew and Swallow. And I have no idea where Chew and Swallow is. I think it's somewhere on the earth. Might be in a different dimension. What do I know? But um, 
the Martians now are having pie issues because they're the pies, they're falling from the sky and they're glopping pie filling everywhere and it's gross and sticky. And so they too, like the residents of Chew and Swallow, have to come up with some kind of a solution to take care of the sticky, disgusting pie from the sky problem. I love these books. They're so silly. Uh, the first two are illustrated by the same illustrator, Ronald Barrett. This third one is illustrated by a different illustrator, very similar in style. Um, this one is, ooh, is it Dre Monez? I maybe probably just butchered that and I apologize. So different, um, different illustrator, but of course still written by Judy Barrett. If you haven't checked these out, you definitely should. They are silly, you know, go get them from your library and read them. Even if you don't have kids, but you like reading children's books, do it. It, they're fun and they're silly and I think you will enjoy them. We are going to take a break and when we come back we're going to move on to different kinds of books and food. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, where we are talking about children's books uh, revolving around food, but um, kind of silly food, maybe you could say. The next two books are by the same author, and I think I discovered them in the same search that showed me that there was a third um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs book, and they looked adorable, so I checked them out from my library, and it turns out that they were adorable. I really like the illustrations. They're bright and fun. Um, the author is Julia Sarcone Roach, hyphenated. Uh, I don't know if it's Sarcone or Sarconi, S-A-R-C-O-N-E, hyphen Roach, like, um, like Roach. Um, and the first one that I saw is The Bear Ate Your Sandwich, and it came out in 2015. And yeah, The Bear Ate Your Sandwich. So the uh, description, bear meat sandwich, adventure ensues. <laughs> um, and uh, So it starts out, by now, I think you know what happened to your sandwich, but you may not know how it happened. So let me tell you, it all started with the bear. So begins Julia Sarcone Roach's delicious tale of a bear lost in the city who happens upon an unattended sandwich in the park. The bear's journey from forest to city and back home again is full of happy accidents, funny encounters, and sensory delights. The story is so engrossing, it's not until the very end that we begin to suspect this is a tall tale. The wonderfully told story, spectacular illustrations, and surprise ending make this Julia Sarconi Roach's best book to date. You'll want to share it with your friends and keep a close eye on your lunch. <laughs> so it starts out, you know, by now I think you know what happened to your sandwich, but you may not know how it happened. So let me tell you. And then it all started with the bear, the bear who starts out his morning in the forest, but through a series of events and coincidences and all kinds of things, ends up in the city. And starts walking around. And, and one of my favorite parts is the bear keeps looking around and thinking, what a strange forest is this is. And what a strange, what strange creatures the forest has. Keeps comparing aspects of the city to what the bear sees in the forest. And then the bear discovers a sandwich. And that's perfect because the bear's had a long day and traveled a long way. So the bear's like, hey, look, a sandwich food for me here in this in this forest so then the bear eats the sandwich and eventually the bear makes it back home because a bear doesn't need to live in the city the bear needs to go home <laughs> so the bear does and then by the end you, we, we do discover that this might be a tall tale and that maybe 
maybe the sandwich wasn't really eaten by a bear. But again, uh, as I said, I really like the illustrations. The story is silly. The bear is adorable. It's a black bear. And um, yeah, the, just even looking at the cover, the way the bear is looking at the sandwich, um, just I, I really like the vibrance of the vibrancy of the colors and the way the story is told. As when I discovered this one, I actually I think I may have seen the this second one first, and it came out just this year. Um, so I think I did see this one first, which led me to the uh, the bear the bear eat your sandwich. But this one is called "There Are No Bears in This Bakery," <laughs> and it's by the same author. Um, so you know the bear eat your sandwich, but there are no bears in this in this bakery. No, really. Uh, and the description of this book is a tough gumshoe of a cat. The name is Muffin, protects his territory, the Little Bear Bakery. But there are no bears here, not on Muffin's watch. One night, Muffin hears a suspicious noise. Mouse? Raccoon? Bat? Nope, not the usual sub suspects. But Muffin hears growling. Could it be? Yep, a bear, just a cub, whose stomach is definitely growling. Muffin's got this case solved. Clearly, this bear needs some donuts. <laughs> In this wonderfully noir-tinged tale, Julia Zarconi Roach gives us another funny story of a hungry bear in the wrong place at the right time. This tale is sly and sweet with sprinkles on top. Once again, we have a narrator telling us a story that, that in, does involve a bear. So yeah, the 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 cat kind of patrols at night around the little bear bakery. Here's a noise. It's trying to figure out what it is. It's a growling. And, you know, we discover it's a bear. And you're thinking, oh, no, the bear is growling. Well, no, the bear's tummy is growling because the bear is hungry. And so Muffin, being a kind cat, uh, gives the bear donuts. <laughs> and wants to make sure that the... Um, the, the donut or the, 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 the bear's tummy stops growling. Then then there's more adventures that ensue. Uh, more things happen. And <laughs> the cat, I love the cat. It's like, the cat's like, my work here is done. I have fed this hungry bear. I have taken care of issues. Everything is great. I, I did my part. I protected the bakery. The bakery is such a mess by the end of this book. And, oh, you know, if you thought it was bad enough in the first book when the, the sandwich got eaten. No, this one, this one, I feel sorry for the fictional bakery owner who has to come in the next morning to discover that uh, Muffin, in, in being helpful, and I put helpful in quotes, has left the Little Bear Bakery. Oh, something less than um clean <laughs> i mean that's really an understatement something less than clean is way way an understatement so that uh the two bear books and i looked at her amazon page and just those two on the bear books but she's got other books that um look cute and I have not read them but she's got some about subways incredible adventure ad inventions excuse me the secret plan that one has um cats and an elephant on the front so that one hmm. more animals excellent ed which has a silly 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 dog on the front of it um and that's by the same author as well as Stacy McCannelty. Um, but these were the, these were the only two that, that were with the bears. Uh, and so I checked those out. Literally, I checked them out from the library, which is one of my favorite things to do because A, I get to go to the library and get books and B, I love being able to just go online and look and see if my library has them and click the request button and off I go. I know it's the simple things that make me happy. Books, children's books about food, silly children's books about bears. Um, yeah, I, I, it definitely doesn't take much to make me happy. Have you read these books? Either the, um, the bears, the bears books or the, um, I keep wanting to say pickles to Pittsburgh, which is accurate, but not exactly right. The cloudy with a chance of meatballs books. Did you like them? Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But um, what are your favorite books from your childhood, from your children's ch childhood, What you know, from whatever? What are your favorite children's books about food? Do you have? 
have favorites. I would love to hear those favorites. I have talked before about a book that, again, that I read as a child where they made a ginormous sandwich. And it was it was literally called something like the biggest sandwich ever or something like that. And I'm sure it's still somewhere in my parents' house because everything is. Um, but it was one of those books that I haven't read that book in probably 40 years, maybe 30. I don't know. But it still sticks with me. And just this huge, huge sandwich that they create that they, you know, they had to use cranes to put the top piece of bread on because the sandwich was as tall as a building. I wonder if I was just exceptionally hungry as a child. I don't know. Mom said I used to um, hide food everywhere, not because I ever went without, but I don't know. I apparently had some sort of scarcity in my brain. She would find half-eaten apples in my desk drawers, and she would find half-eaten sandwiches under the couch. We had a couch that was pretty high up off the floor, and I could crawl under there, and, you know, the slat, the support slat underneath. It was a perfect shelf, apparently, for sandwiches. Um... So I don't know. I seem to be strangely, seem to have been strangely obsessed with food as a kid. I should maybe look into that. Maybe. I don't know. I really don't know where that stemmed from. But hey, I got some good children's books out of it. We do have to take our second break of the podcast. Um, So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, where I'm talking today about children's books involving food or cooking or something. And over the break, I realized what what I was actually looking for when I discovered the books that I talked about earlier, the third Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball books, and then the Bear books. And it actually wasn't for this podcast. I know. I was shocked, too. I was looking for books for one of my nieces who got a um, cooking set for Christmas. She loves to play, she and one of my other nieces love to play chef. They they even have aprons and chef hats and they like to dress up and, and cook. And so I was looking for books about, not not necessarily kids cookbooks, but books involving cooking and food. I remember reading a book, uh, maybe third, fourth, fifth grade, somewhere along those lines. I I know it was a chapter book. I have no idea what this book was. This is one of the things that drives me crazy from my childhood and life and why I started writing down every book I've read. Um, The book was about a young a young girl and she was having, you know, some struggles in life. Her cat kept killing birds and that was really traumatizing her. I think she had a stepmom. Uh, she loved baking. She was having trouble in school also, but she loved baking and she loved baking bread. And eventually she figured out the cat situation. She, um, had to do a science project and she realized finally, finally, after a lot of struggle that, that bread was science and she could do a science project. I can't remember if it was a science project or just a report, but something with science and that she could talk about the science behind baking bread. And I remember just really liking that book because she had all these big problems, some of them feeling really big, some of them being very big. 
and she figured it out in the end. And as a kid who struggled with coming up with projects <laughs> like science fair projects or science report projects or, you know, reports of any kind, I really empathized, sympathized with the character. And for some reason that stuck with me, the figuring out the bread and, um, the science part. And so, yeah, that just kind of led me down another delightful rabbit hole of looking for children's books and about food. If you have any idea what that book is, let me know. I guess I could just like start typing in keywords from it or phrases from it and see if I could figure it out. But, um, yeah, I would like to revisit that book as an adult and just see how much I am not remembering from it. But there are a million books, obviously, out there about food. Uh, not only the ones that I have mentioned already, but um, I mentioned some before, like James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. I, I featured him on the podcast uh, in an episode. This week, this past week has been Dr. Seuss week. I, I've been loving all the, um, like today, today is Friday. It was Read Across America Day. Maybe I should have led with that. Hey, today was Read Across America Day, but you know, it was Dr. Seuss week. And so Dr. Seuss, of course, has green eggs and ham. And uh, you know, that's gross. I actually made green eggs, not and ham, but I made green eggs for my husband last year for St. Patrick's Day. I just put in food coloring. They were gross. They tasted fine, but they looked really gross. <laughs> but he appreciated that I put a little weird effort into his uh, St. Patrick's Day breakfast. Um, I've talked about how to eat fried worms. Um, I've talked about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, also by Roald Dahl. Uh, I'm looking at a list of 50, 50 books to... Uh, in. 50 children's books about food. So that's what this is. Let me see. Um, it's on a blog called Kitchen Concoctions. So, and it's from 2015. It's got Dragons Love Tacos. Uh, talked about that. I actually just gave uh, a friend of mine, her son, I gave him Dragons Love Tacos, and it's now his favorite book. So that's awesome. Uh, there's the If You Give books by Laura Joffe Numeroff. Uh, you've maybe heard of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. If you haven't, um, or if you have, there's a whole series of those. So, you know, if you give a mouse a cookie, then the mouse is going to want milk, and then the mouse is going to need this, and then the mouse is going to need that. It, it's this whole, like, progression of things that the mouse is going to need. So don't give the mouse a cookie, basically. <laughs> but there's also if you give a dog a donut, if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a pig a pancake, if you give a cat a cupcake. I've read many of those, but I have not read some of them. I didn't know about if you give a cat a cupcake. I also like that after the first one, if you give a mouse a cookie, they all have great alliteration. So dog a donut, moose a muffin, pig a pancake, cat a cupcake. I like alliteration. I can't help it. Um, apparently Tommy DePaola has several books about cooking. I knew some of them, but he's got um, Pancakes for Breakfast. There's a theme, pancakes. Um, and then the popcorn book. There's a whole bunch of books by Tommy DePaola. Of course, the um, Very Hungry Caterpillar. That is, I think, about to celebrate a 50-year anniversary. I think I read that somewhere. There's The Little Red Hen, which was another book I had as a child that I loved. And I was always so annoyed by the friends who didn't want to help. Because, you know, I wanted to bake bread. Uh, apparently, uh, I'm telling you, I had a weird interest with, in food as a kid. Ten Apples Up on Top. Do you know that one? It's by Theo Lesigue which is Geisel spelled backwards, which is Dr. Seuss's real name. So that is a Dr. Seuss book. It's just not written by so-called Dr. Seuss. Uh, there's books about baking, um, bread and jam for Fan Francis. Have you read the, anything about the, the Francis books? Um, the, they're by Russell Hoban and they're adorable, but I think of them fondly because again, I'm going to be showing my age, but do you remember if you're of a certain age, do you remember when you could go to the library as a kid and get a book and the record? So it was like a book on tape, but you check out the book and then it was, so it was kind of like having somebody read to you. Well, Bread and Jam for Francis was one of my favorites and kind of my first, I guess, one of my first introductions to audiobooks. You know, I'd bring it home, I'd put it on my little um, portable record player in my, my room and then I could read along with Bread and Jam for Francis and it was divine. I loved the library. I still love the library. Um, there are a million books about food out there and so that's why I 
went on this crazy rabbit hole was looking for books to that maybe my niece would be interested in. Um, I came across one that I haven't read, but it's called Cockadoo Cook a Doodle Doo. And if you love the story of the little red hen, then you are sure to enjoy this version too. In Cook a Doodle Doo, Rooster pulls out his great granny's cookbook and finds a yummy recipe for strawberry shortcake. He then finds some friends, turtle, iguana, and pot-bellied pig to help him create the dessert. Well, lots of mistakes and learning along with lots of mistake and learning along the way finally result in a yummy strawberry delight. Um, excuse me, the sidebars of the book include lots of useful cooking information for added discussion and learning. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, there, there is, it's not the little red hen. It's a rooster this time. Ah, so I like that we have a male cook instead of, you know, a, a typical kind of female cook. And then we have different friends, but still, and it sounds, I, again, haven't read it. Gonna have to look into it. Like maybe they actually do help him create instead of being all silly and then wanting to eat the um, finished product, but not wanting to help with it. What are your favorite books about food? I would love to hear about them. I am sure I have a million more. I'm sure I will come up with more. Um, ew, if you know the name of that book or anything about that book with the uh, the cat and the bread and the science project and the teenage and the preteen adolescent whatever angst uh let me know that too because i have no idea i am going to wrap this up i want to thank you so much for joining me i hope you've had a wonderful week and that you are going into the weekend with time to read that would be great i hope that you will join me on tuesday when i will have an interview with author ea amar about his book the unrepentant it is a thriller and it is it's good. It's action packed. And I am looking forward to speaking with him about that book. So join me on Tuesday for that. But again, in the meantime, have a great weekend and go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program